Hello and welcome back to Global Value. In today's video, we're performing a fundamental stock analysis of Camping World Holdings Inc, ticker symbol CWH. So we're looking at Camping World today as a subscriber request. Currently, the business's stock price is down 21% over the last year. Right now, they're trading for $26.01 per share. Over the last five years, Camping World stock price is down 36.5% overall. That's down just under 9% compounded annually. The business is up more than five times from their lows in March of 2020, however. And at one point in May of 2021, the business was up 10 times from their lows. Since becoming a publicly listed company a little over six years ago, Camping World Holdings is compounding their stock price at about 2% annually. The company also does pay out dividends, and currently they have an above average 9.6% dividend yield. So their average dividend yield throughout this six year time frame would be in addition to these compounded annual returns. Currently, Camping World is trading in between their 52 week high and their 52 week low. They're about $8 below their 52 week high, and they're about $5 above their 52 week low. Right now, a significant amount of the business's shares outstanding are sold short. Over 21% of their shares are sold short. So there is a lot of short interest around the business and Camping World has about a $1.1 billion market cap, but they have about a $4.3 billion total enterprise value. So the company does have a lot of debt as well. For more background about the business, Camping World Holdings Inc. provides services, protection plans, products, and resources for recreational vehicle enthusiasts across the United States. The company operates its business through two reportable segments, Good Sam Services and Plans, and RV and Outdoor Retail. It generates maximum revenue from the RV and Outdoor Retail segment. The RV and Outdoor Retail segment consists of all aspects of RV dealership operations, which includes selling new and used RVs, assisting with the financing of new and used RVs, selling protection and insurance related services and plans for RVs, servicing and repairing new and used RVs, installation of RV parts and accessories, and others. Camping World Holdings serves its customers through dealerships and online and e-commerce platforms. The company was founded in 1966 and is headquartered in Lincolnshire, Illinois. So for our fundamental analysis today, we are performing the Select 6 analysis, taking a checklist style approach of six standard financial metrics to come to a holistic and beginning understanding of Camping World based off of their business fundamentals. So this analysis is still an evolving and improving process. It's a work in progress and it's an opportunity to learn in public. So it will get better over time. With that said, let's get right into today's analysis. Starting things off with metric number one, we want their average return on capital over their last five years to be above 14%. And there are two key reasons for this. The first is that over the long run, over the course of decades, a stock is likely to return approximately what its underlying business returns. And these business returns are gonna be captured here by return on capital. The second is that the average publicly listed business earns about a 7% return on capital. So by asking for a benchmark of 14% or higher here, we can potentially build in some margin of safety for ourselves based off the overall quality of the business being about twice as good as average. So Camping World's return on capital have fluctuated pretty significantly over these years. Interestingly enough, the business had its lowest returns on capital in their fiscal 2019. And actually in fiscal 2020, when a lot of other businesses suffered, Camping World was doing quite well. This was particularly fueled from the enthusiasm around going outdoors and a shortage of RVs that really led to a lack of dealer inventory and a huge backlog of additional orders for dealers. Camping World has earned pretty high returns on capital since the COVID-19 pandemic lockdowns. In 2021, they earned about 23.5% returns on capital, and over their last 12 months, the business has earned about 18.5% returns on capital. So averaged out over these previous five fiscal years, even though they've been sporadic, Camping World has averaged about a 15.5% return on capital. So that's slightly above that 14% benchmark we're looking for, meaning that this is a check on metric number one, as their returns on capital are twice as good as those of a typical business. Next up for metric number two, here we're taking a high level overview of the growth of their business. So we're looking for revenue, net income, and free cash flow growth over the last five years. This metric is gonna be all or nothing in nature. Either all three of these are gonna be up for this to be a check, or if even one of these is down, this entire metric will be an X. We'll also be including their last 12 months worth of numbers in our calculations here. So throughout this time frame, Camping World's revenues have grown by nearly two thirds. So they're up 65%. Their earnings really have exploded in recent years and they're up more than six times. 
and their free cash flows, which were up in their previous three fiscal years, are actually down over their last 12 months. This was because the company had more than a $500 million change in their inventories. They wrote down half a billion dollars worth of inventory in this period. Even though they were very cash flow generative in 2019 and 2020, with their change in inventories, their free cash flows declined by quite a bit in 2021, and they were negative over their last 12 months. So unfortunately, this is an X here on metric number two. This is not all that dissimilar from a lot of other businesses which have had to take inventory write downs over the past year. Although this may be potentially concerning because this does affect their free cash flows and free cash flows are really the lifeblood of any business. Ultimately, a business's abilities to produce free cash flows now and until judgment day discounted back by some reasonable interest rate is what that business is going to be worth. So a business can use its free cash flows to pay dividends, buy back shares, reinvest back into the business, make acquisitions, or pay down debt. It's not great to see that their free cash flows were down over this period. Next up for metric number three, here we're taking the perspective of an individual shareholder in the business by looking at Camping World on a per share basis. So we're looking for earnings per share growth over the last five years for the business. In our previous metric, we learned that their earnings were up six times over this period. However, there's something here that may be surprising for shareholders in that Camping World has issued about three times as many additional shares outstanding over these last five years as they had at the beginning of the period. This has mainly been because Camping World has gone on a consolidation and a roll-up spree. The company has made numerous acquisitions in multiple of these years often paying for these acquisitions with combinations of cash or their shares. Again, the business has issued three times additional shares outstanding over this time frame, mostly to fuel these acquisitions. That's a massive amount of additional shares to be paying, but even still their earnings are up at a rate that's faster than this. This has led to earnings per share growth over this time frame for Camping World. Over their last 12 months, the business has earned $4.59 for each share that they've had outstanding. And so this is a check here on metric number three. Next up for metric number four, here we're looking for something very similar. So we're looking for free cash flow per share growth over the past five years for Camping World. As we learned in our previous metric, because of their change in inventories, their free cash flows are down over their last 12 months. So coupling that with this massive amount of shares that they've issued, this means that their free cash flows per share have declined over this time frame. While they would actually technically be higher than they were in 2017, they would still be negative over their last 12 months. So this is still going to be an X here on metric number four, as we want businesses that have positive free cash flow per share. Again, what this comes down to is that change in inventories and these additional shares. Ideally, we don't like to see that a business is diluting shareholders because when you purchase a share of stock, what you're really buying is a fractional ownership percentage in that underlying business. And so when a business issues new shares by diluting existing shareholders in the business, they're decreasing your ownership percentage in the business, which will ultimately decrease the percentage of the business's profits that you're entitled to as a shareholder. Well, Camping World is an RV dealer that's going to have a lot of tangible assets. It ultimately will depend at what valuations that Camping World was issuing these shares at and what prices that they were paying for some of these dealer roll-ups. That's something that hopefully the company discloses in their filings, but that would help you get a better understanding if Camping World was getting more value than the price that they were paying for these acquisitions. So to recap where we stand currently, through our first four metrics, we have two checks and two Xs for Camping World. Next up for metric number five, here we're evaluating how the business is utilizing debt. So we don't wanna be investing in overly levered businesses because during economic downturns, it's overly levered businesses that are gonna be at the greatest risk of poor outcomes. So we want their net debt, which is their total debt minus their cash and their short-term investments, to be below the amount of free cash flow that the business has produced over the last five years. Camping World has added on to their net debt position since 2017. Currently, the business has about $3 billion worth of net debt. And over this time frame on net, the business has produced $870 million worth of free cash flow. Most of their free cash flows came from their fiscal 2020 and some from their fiscal 2019. Again, because of their more than $500 million change in their inventories in 2021. Their free cash flows are down in that time frame and they're negative over their last 12 months. So on an average basis of their free cash flows here, it does not look like the business would be able to support their debt loads given their historical free cash flows or their current free cash flows. And so this means that this is going to be an X on metric number five and that their higher debt load could be a potential concern for you as an investor in this business. So if you're interested in learning about this in more depth, they'll break out their debt profile in more detail and you can get a better understanding of how their debt is structured, when it matures, what rates it's at, 
and what kind of covenants are associated with some of this debt. Then our sixth and final metric, the big metric of them all, we want their average free cash flow to their total enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. If this is the case, this will potentially offer us a slight risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury and potentially give us a reasonable starting point for evaluation of the business. We learned in our previous metric that Camping World has produced $870 million worth of free cash flow over the last five years, meaning that in an average year, the business has produced about $170 million worth of free cash flow. And currently the business has about a $4.3 billion total enterprise value. So we're using their total enterprise value because it takes into account both their market cap and their net debt position. And it's going to give us a perspective of the economic reality of the business that's going to be more similar to as if Camping World were a private company. So when we divide their $170 million of their average free cash flow by their $4.3 billion total enterprise value, that is going to give us about a 4% average free cash flow to enterprise value yield for Camping World. So while that is slightly better than the yield of the 10-year treasury. That's down slightly from that 5% risk premium that we're ideally seeking. And so unfortunately, this means that this will be an X here on metric number six, as it doesn't look like the business's average free cash flow to enterprise value yield is offering us that risk premium that we're looking for. Also worth noting is that the business has negative free cash flow over their last 12 months. So they currently have a negative current free cash flow to enterprise value yield. So just because this is an X here on metric number six doesn't mean that you're necessarily going to toss this business out. Camping World could still be a potentially interesting business to dig into and learn more about. Keep in mind that this type of analysis is not a buy or sell recommendation of any security and that this is just one of our six metrics here and that they're meant to be taken in holistically. While these metrics are simple, when they're combined together, they can be very powerful and we've still got some interesting aspects of the business left to cover. Then here as a bonus, we're taking a look at Camping World's dividend profile. So currently Camping World is paying out about a 9.6% dividend yield. This dividend yield is significantly above that of most businesses in the stock market, and it's much higher than the yield that you'd be getting from an S&P 500 ETF currently. However, people make mistakes all the time by blindly chasing dividends, so it's important to stop and look at the underlying fundamentals of a business to determine whether or not those look healthy and whether their dividends are supported by either their earnings or their free cash flows depending on the type of business. For Camping World, we want their dividends to be well supported by their free cash flows, and that has only been the case in two of these five years. Camping World has a somewhat interesting dividend profile here as they paid out both common dividends and special dividends in all five of these years, which is a bit strange. Also, the business has paid out large amount of dividends in all five of these years, even in the years that they've had negative or minuscule free cash flows. That seemingly is really not a great use of capital allocation ability here as especially if the business is concentrating on a roll-up merger and acquisition strategy, it would likely be better served by using these free cash flows to be able to pay for more deals and grow the business that way, especially if they're earning above average returns on capital through most of these years, as that likely would ultimately lead to stronger value creation for shareholders over the long run, and it could help them better manage their debt position, which is potentially somewhat of a concern for the business currently. The business's free cash flows have also been quite sporadic over this time frame, so it would make sense that if they were trying to return cash to shareholders, that they would want to do so in the form of special dividends. However, it really doesn't make sense that they're paying out special dividends in all five of these years. And again, it doesn't make sense that the business has continued paying out dividends through thick and thin, even when their free cash flows have not supported it, and the business has probably had some more attractive uses of their free cash flows. So this is something that looks like a potential red flag here for Camping World in terms of their capital allocation strategy. Strategy. In order to understand management's approach to capital allocation, you would want to dig into the company's filings and learn more about both the character and the competence of management when it comes to capital allocation. Currently, Marcus Limonis is Camping World CEO. So he's the popular host of CNBC's The Profit. So it'd be interesting to see how a business TV star is doing in terms of actually running his own business and what he has to say about their capital allocation. Again, over their last 12 months, Camping World is still paying out a dividend and they're still paying out special dividends and they have negative free cash flows as well. Then everything we've discussed so far is important, but there's something missing that in my opinion is the main reason to analyze Camping World, which takes us on to using a discounted cash flow model to come to a potential fair value for the business. So a discounted cash flow model is just like any other model in any other discipline. 
Its outputs are going to be sensitive to its inputs. So Camping World does not have that long of a track record as a publicly listed business. And a discounted cash flow model is based off the overall predictability of a business's future free cash flows. So we're using some estimates and assumptions here for Camping World. And so it's going to be up to you to do your own homework here to determine whether or not these are going to be accurate and applicable going forward for the business. So here we're starting with an average of their free cash flows over their last three years. So this is going to give us a more normalized perspective of their abilities to produce free cash flows compared to their current negative free cash flows. However, However, this did include the company's boom year in 2020. Then we're using historical growth assumptions for how the business has grown their free cash flow since becoming a publicly listed business. So using about six years worth of their free cash flow growth here, if we assume that the business can grow their average free cash flows at a rate of 3.5% annually for the 10 years out from today, then we assume that these free cash flows decline to growing at a rate of 3% annually for the 10 years out after that. So estimating 20 years out into the future, if we add in the company's tangible book value, which gives us an estimate of the company's tangible net worth per share, and we were ideally seeking a a 15% rate of return, which is the rate of return that Warren Buffett is ideally looking for from his investments. Keep in mind that he's also looking for his margin of safety requirements. So this margin of safety requirement is in addition to this discount rate, and this depends on the industry dynamics that a company operates in as well as the company's competitive strengths or lack thereof in that industry. From today's current valuations of Camping World, it looks like an approximate intrinsic value for the company is around $25.5 per share. So that's just very slightly down from what the business's current stock price is at. However, keep in mind that this is just an estimate and that this is subject to change. One of the big factors here is that this is really predicated on their predictability of their future free cash flows, and we don't have that long of a track record for Camping World. So this is likely going to be less accurate here than it would be for some other types of businesses. Also, please note that this 15% rate of return would be including the company's 9.6% dividend yield currently. So we would not be doubly counting the company's dividend payouts here. And so it looks like their stock price would only be appreciating by about 6% annually if this was the case. It's worth being mindful of the fact that this type of analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with the properly licensed and registered legal and financial professional. So in summary, Camping World Holdings checks the box on two out of our six metrics today. The company earns above average returns on capital of about 15.5% over their last five years. They've also grown their earnings and their revenues over the last five years. However, their free cash flows are down over their last 12 months because of a major change in their inventories. The company has also issued three times as many shares outstanding over this period as they have at the beginning of the period. Most of these were to fund and fuel mergers and acquisitions as part of a roll-up strategy for Camping World. When we looked at the company's debt, it looked like their historical free cash flows were not able to support their high debt loads. And again, the company has negative free cash flow over their last 12 months. Even though the company's average free cash flow to their enterprise value looks like it's slightly above the yield of the 10-year treasury, that, that wasn't offering us that 5% risk premium we were ideally seeking. Looking at the company's dividend profile shows some of the potential strangeness that's going on in terms of their capital allocation, where the business was paying out both common and special dividends in all five of these years, even when the business was not able to support their dividend payouts using their free cash flows. And it would seem like the business had more attractive uses of their capital, especially through making acquisitions or reinvesting back into the business, given that they earn high average returns on capital and that they currently have a lot of debt that they'd be able to pay down. Finally, performing a discounted cash flow analysis of Camping World. If you've done the work and you believe that those historical growth assumptions are going to be accurate and applicable going forward for Camping World, and you are ideally seeking a 15% rate of return from Camping World, then it looks like at today's current valuations, a reasonable fair value for the business is right around $25.5 per share. Again, there are reasons why that may not be accurate, so it's worth reiterating that this type of analysis is not financial advice, it's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security, and before considering any potential investment decision, please consider consult with your financial advisor. This analysis instead serves as a beginning and holistic understanding to help you determine whether it's worth your time and energy to dig in and learn more about Camping World. One resource that will definitely help you stay up to speed with what's going on in the market and help you learn more about the business is Seeking Alpha. Checking out Seeking Alpha directly supports the channel as I'm part of their affiliate program. So most of you probably know Seeking Alpha as a source of community written articles on different stocks. But over the past little while, they've actually become a lot more than that with their new offering, which is Seeking Alpha Premium. 
Premium has a number of different features where you can track buy, hold, and sell ratings on your favorite stocks. These ratings are from the Seeking Alpha community, Wall Street analysts, and Seeking Alpha's algorithm. You can see earnings call transcripts, investor presentations, SEC filings, and press releases all in one place. You can add your own margin of safety targets and get alerts for when your favorite stocks hit that level. You can get unlimited access to Seeking Alpha articles, and you can tailor your rating experience based on the type of investor you are. You can get 10 years of financial data on any stock to help you with your analysis. You can also import your portfolio into your Seeking Alpha dashboard to make researching easier. And if that didn't convince you, the best thing is that an annual plan is only 119 bucks. That's just 33 cents per day through my referral link down in the description below. Normally premium is $239, but if you use my link, it's 50% off. So check it out if you're interested. As a value investor, you're ultimately trying to conduct this research as if you're going to own 100% of a business and you can truly understand the ins and outs of that company, learning about the business accurately, completely, and then going back and asking yourself, what did you miss in order to come to the underlying essence of the business and understand what's important and what's not important for the company into the future. So through this research, you'll learn more about the qualitative and the quantitative aspects of Camping World, and you'll likely be able to determine for yourself what a reasonably appropriate intrinsic value for the company will be. So with that said, that's it for today's fundamental stock analysis of Camping World Holdings, Inc., ticker symbol CWH. Again, we looked at the business as a subscriber request, and the company's CEO is Marcus Limonis of CNBC The Profit fame. So it's always interesting to look at these celebrity-owned and operating businesses, as it can take you off the beaten path of a typical corporation. So I'm happy to make an analysis of the business, and if you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, and comment down below what business you want me to take a look at next time. Thanks for learning about Camping World with me, and have a great day.